Navjeet K. Ball, class of 1984. In 2008, Ball became the first ethnic minority and second woman to serve as Commissioner of Revenue for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. As Commissioner, she oversees the Department of Revenue's approximately 2,200 employees who work in tax administration, child support enforcement, and municipal finance across the state. In 2010, the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts appointed her to the Access to Justice Commission, where she co-chairs an administrative justice working group. Prior to joining the Department of Revenue, Commissioner Ball was a public bond lawyer in the Public Finance Division of the Boston-based firm Mintz Levin. During her 17 years there, she co-founded the firm's domestic violence project and served on the pro bono committee. Ball served as a trustee for the Gaudino Fund at Williams from 1996 to 2002 and as chair of the board of the Legal Advisory and Resource Center, a legal services hotline for low-income Massachusetts residents. She was honored with the 2008 Cornerstone Award from the National South Asian Bar Association, and Commissioner Ball received her JD from Northeastern University in 1989. Public servants must like podiums or something. Um, <laughs> I too am more comfortable standing up here. Um, I wanted to start by thanking President Falk and the trustees and the Society of Alumni for this tremendous honor. Uh, it is humbling, to say the least, to be included with this tremendous class of award recipients. As with all things Williams, I am struck by what accomplished and genuinely nice people these folks are. Um, so congratulations to all of you. Um, when I received the letter informing me of this um, award back in the spring, of course, I first thought it was a fundraising letter. Um, but when I opened it up and I read it, um, I, my sort of immediate and profound reaction was that it was a big mistake. Um, the, the college had made a terrible mistake and I needed to send the letter back. Um, I carefully reread it. I checked the address. Yes, it was addressed to me. Um, and I thought, well, maybe this is for real. Um, and I started getting emails from Brooks and Deb Lapine and realized they really mean it. They really, really mean it. <laughs> so, so here I am. Um, my favorite reaction when I told my uh, fellow Williams alums about this uh, came from my brother, uh, who is here today. My brother, Teju, is a class of 1986 um, from Williams, and he's now a successful physician at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, his reaction was, hey, congratulations, sis. That's great. What exactly is your chosen field of endeavor? <laughs> Which I thought was a very valid question. Um, it got me thinking um, about this award, about my Williams education, my professional life, and how it all fits together. Um, quick background on how I got to Williams. I, I started out life uh, in Nakuru, Kenya. Unlike our president, I actually was born there, and I have a long form birth certificate to prove it. Um, so I was born in Kenya uh, with my, my parents, um, and we moved to England where my brother was born. Then we lived in Ethiopia for a couple years, and then Zambia. Um, I moved to this country right before I started high school. Um, to Syracuse, New York, because if you live in the most beautiful climate in the world, why wouldn't you move to upstate New York? Um, so I, I started Williams at the age of 16. Um, I was uh, young when I got here, so was my brother when, when he started. Um, and I was really just beginning to figure out what it meant to be an American. I'd been in this country for about five years. Um, I actually became a United States citizen after my freshman year in college, and for the first time in my life, my citizenship was aligned with the country I was living in. Um, Williams liberal arts education was a great, great luxury. My parents who grew up in post-colonial India and Kenya, for them education was really a means to an end, uh, both medicine and teaching. Uh, they entered those colleges when they were still teenagers. The great luxury of my Williams education and for their students in the, in the room is that it's a four-year period of intellectual growth and personal development. I learned how to think, how to ask questions, and how to engage in public discourse. And on a more visceral level, the college's intellectual and educational history has become a part of my sense of self. Having the imprimatur of a Williams education and all that it implies has been my passport, if you will, to becoming a part of American society, to, become, to being accepted and welcomed into a particular slice of American culture. And it really is the foundation on which I have constructed a sense of place, a sense of belonging, and a sense of home. Um, truly the greatest gift that my parents ever gave me was my Williams education. Uh, my parents are both here today, and I just want to say thank you. Um, sorry.
we, we came to this country um, with, as immigrants without a really clear sense of what the higher education system in this country was all about, and you helped me figure it out and gave me all the support and love I could ever ask you. Thank you. Um, so talking about my Williams experience really quickly, my fellow Williams students, in particular my professors, Professor Stephen Fix, who's here, were never content to take me at my word. I learned how to defend my positions, change my way of thinking, understand historical trends, appreciate political philosophies, and really become a citizen of this country and of the world. This kind of learning took place in the classroom, obviously, but, ob but also in the library, the log, which was a happening place back then, the snack bar, late at night over a grilled honey bun, I understand they still have those. Um, and it also took place in our dorm rooms, in particular in our hallway, um, in our Mission Park suite. I'm deep, deeply, deeply honored and touched that my freshman year roommate, Maureen Kane, is here today um, with her husband, Tim, and I'm pretty sure that neither one of us would have picked this day when we started back in Morgan East in 1980. So for me, learning also took place in the, very, uh, in the many, many activist groups that I gravitated towards in my junior and senior year. It was there that I learned leadership skills, the art of conciliation, and the importance of taking a stand for one's principles. In the, in the early 1980s when I was here, the campus issue was divestment from South Africa, and I joined the Williams Anti-Apartheid Club. So between meetings and educating myself about South African politics and history, I fell in love with my best friend and my husband, um, Eric Fernald, who's on his way here. Eric's ties to Williams are deep-seated. My late father-in-law, George Fernald, uh, was a rebel who turned his back on Amherst, where his father and brothers had all gone to come to Williams College. Um, my sister-in-law, Becky, was in the first class of women that was admitted to Williams. Um, my father-in-law passed away um, back about 12 years ago now, and I just know he would have been very proud to be here today. Um, I graduated from Williams with a BA in philosophy and a minor in African studies. I moved to Boston, I went to law school, and started working uh, at, a, at a large firm in Boston upon graduating. Stayed there for 17 years working as a, a bond lawyer. Um, which I loved because it gave me a chance to work with public sector and nonprofit clients, including Williams. Um, I, I worked on the science building, so for those students who study there, you can thank me later. Um, and it, and, it, and it's been a, it was a great career. Um, at Ms. Levin, I, I co-founded the firm's domestic violence project as a first-year attorney. Uh, we trained lawyers and paralegals to provide legal representat representation to indigent women who were trying to obtain restraining orders against their abusers. Uh, we work closely with Greater Boston Legal Services and other law firms in town to put that program together. Um, that was back in 1989. That program is still the signature pro bono effort of Mince Levin, and it's still going strong today more than 20 years later. Um, I'm, I'm on the board of LARC, uh, Legal Services Hotline, uh, as a point of entry for poor people trying to access legal services in Greater Boston. Um, I was appointed by the Mass Supreme Judicial Court to the Access to Justice Commission tasked with the delivery of, uh, assessing the delivery of legal services in Massachusetts. Um, I was on the Gaudino Fund here at Williams. I'm on the South Asian Bar Association Board in Boston and the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, and I'm now on the Boston Bar Association Council. So what does that all mean? Um, it's next, really, to me, an extension of my years here at Williams, my activist years, where I learned how to become an effective leader and to take responsibility for the things I want to change in my community. I was honored to be appointed as the Commissioner of Revenue by Governor Patrick in 2008. It's been a particularly tumultuous time to be a State Revenue Commissioner, as you might imagine. Um, here in Massachusetts, we weathered two consecutive years of steep revenue declines, which had never occurred before. Um, but I'm pleased to report that the state economy is recovering, although there are still strong headwinds. Um, while my legal background is obviously a tremendous asset to my current job, my Williams education has been a tremendous help also. Having a liberal arts education has enabled me to converse intelligently and productively with a wide variety of professionals and politicians. I work closely now with economists uh, to understand the economic forces at work in our state. Um, this would come as a great surprise to my freshman Econ 101 professor. <laughs> who despaired over my supply and demand charts, which are always a mirror image of what they were supposed to be, and I, they still are, I still don't really get it. Um, <laughs> but don't tell my boss. Um, I speak frequently with legislators and administration leaders, um, as well as business groups and practitioner groups on tax policy matters. 
Um, perhaps most surprisingly, I work very closely with our IT division. We're implementing a new integrated tax management system. And while I, I will never be an IT professional, I can at least have an intelligent conversation with them. To be perfectly honest, uh, though, that last uh, point really has nothing to do with my Williams education, per se, and everything to do with my ability to pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Um, so, but what does this all mean? How did, how is this, what is my chosen field of endeavor? How does it all fit together? It came to me earlier this week as I was obsessing about this presentation. I was at a meeting with Governor Patrick, and in response to a question, he said, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to leave this place better than what we found it. Now, that doesn't seem like a terribly complicated goal, but I think in this case, simplicity really helps. Just leave this place better than what you found it. That's really an excellent summary of what my liberal arts education has been for me. It's given me the tools and the hunger to leave this world a better place than it was before. So perhaps, Teiji, that's my chosen field of endeavor. Um, I want to finish by noting that my husband Eric and I are truly, truly fortunate to have many wonderful children in our lives. First and foremost are our two kids, uh, my daughter Mina, who's 17 and a college hunting senior, uh, my son Amar, who's 14 and a soccer playing high school freshman. They are our gift to the world and will truly leave it a better place than we will. Um, we're also blessed to have many wonderful nieces and nephews and I'm constantly amazed at how smart and accomplished they all are. And um, one of them, another college hunting senior, is here today, Hillary. Um, and I want to call special attention to my brother's daughter, my niece, Ella. When Ella was 12 last year, uh, she joined her parents, who are both Cleveland Clinic physicians, and my father, who is a retired doctor, at a clinic in rural Peru, where the Cleveland Clinic provides free medical care. That Peruvian clinic is staffed by Cleveland Clinic medical students and, and physicians rotate through. So Ella decided to run a program for the children of this village on dental hygiene. She was 12. She challenged her classmates in her suburban Cleveland middle school to gather toothbrushes and toothpaste and floss, and she uh, put on an education pro program for the kids in the village. She did such a great job at the clinic, uh, down there that the Cleveland Clinic students have asked for her materials so that they can continue the work that she did. And the shoe company Tom's has agreed to donate thousands of shoes uh, to, this, to this community. Um, I have no doubt but that Ella will be a Bicentennial Medal winner herself one day, or whatever they give it, the Ohio State University. <laughs> so thank you to the president and the trustees and the Alumni Association for this tremendous honor. I hope that I can continue to bring honor to this great institution. Thank you.